Let's listen to mission control as they get near the atmosphere in the flight of Apollo 8. They just had a report that things were going well. They should be at the atmosphere uh, in just about in this the moment. course of this blackout period, which uh, we'll be into very shortly here. The comm control will be handed over from the Redstone to the Huntsville. And we have lost signal. The, uh, our network controller says we lost signal at 1.46, 46 minutes and uh, with very nearly 46 seconds. And our estimate is that this uh, blacked out period will will continue for, let's see, three minutes. The actual estimate on the flight plan was three minutes and three seconds. Blackout was supposed to have started at 10.37.38 uh, Eastern Standard Time, and it appears the thousand right about feet now, high. the crew should be getting They'll see just under seven Gs. That means we would estimate they're down to the uh, 180,000 foot point, flattening out and actually beginning to ascend slightly. They should be, uh, their heat rate will dramatically recede, but they'll still maintain a, a large heat load, nearly 5,000 degrees out on the leading edge of the heat shield. Seven Gs is seven times their weight on Earth, so these 150-pound astronauts uh, raise something like 1,050 pounds would be the effect as they are pressed against their couches. This re-entry. The flight director notes that he hears some keying coming, the, as in Morse code keying. And uh, he's wondering as to the source of it. 146 hours, 48 minutes. This is animation, but uh, it is highly possible that the bright glow of this man-made meteorite is what it amounts to now, uh, can be seen from the Pacific Ocean. It is in the dark. And it must be quite a sight for the and our astronauts. Put the spacecraft down about 35 to 36 miles above the Earth, uh, and elevating slightly, perhaps up to 40. Ken Mattingly just put in a call and just, frankly, labeled it a radio check. He's gotten no responses yet. If the blackout lasts as planned, it should be over in about 10 or 11 seconds from now. Never has man entered uh, the Earth's atmosphere at this speed before. It wasn't required of Earth orbiting spacecraft. They came in at about 17,500 miles an hour, and this is 24,600 miles an hour. Quite a difference. And, and uh, Ken tries a second call through the Huntsville. Huntsville is the tracking Our station near the land. Uh, say that the crew along about now should be emerging. Establish contact with the spacecraft. Frank, go. You may have heard. Three and a half minutes since we went into the blacked out area. We're uh, rough because uh, they have not had. Communication checks. Uh, communication authority to one of the range aircraft. We call them Araya. The unmanned test vehicles, Apollo 4 and 6, were driven back into the atmosphere after Earth orbit, high Earth orbit at this speed. And the Huntsville. The Huntsville says they have acquired an S band signal. They do have a 51 minutes, four seconds. 
That does not. And uh, they immediately called back and said no contact. They negate that first uh, announcement. Oh. Well, we thought we had One it. of the uh, recovery helicopters reported seeing something, but those kind of reports at these critical moments aren't unusual. It's now... Uh, just two minutes past the time when we should have heard from the spacecraft through the blackout. Ken Mattingly puts in a, another call. And there's Jim Lovell. Ha-ha! He says we're looking good. I can't tell whether it's Borman or Lovell. Let's try to cut it in. shape. What happy words. The first communication was extremely broken up, but the two words that did come through were looking good. Those are the sweetest the first time man has ever achieved. Another one of the flight controllers here in the control center heard the crew mention a, something like a real fireball. A spaceman who have come back from the four Mercury orbital flights and the Gemini series all said that that's a spectacular uh, entry in daylight. We're about one minute to drogue deploy. Drogue shoots out at uh, 23,000 feet. And the time plot says 146 hours, 54 minutes. That should be uh, just about uh, one minute from now. That's, those are the small parachutes, which slow the spacecraft down to about 300 miles an hour at around 23,000 feet high, which is just about the uh, Yorktown is reporting and confirming a radar contact. The bearing is being passed to the recovery room here in Houston. There are bisky readings before drogues. Am I? Roger, bisky's reading plus 4 ball 7. Plus 2 ball 812. Minus 16502. That's Jim Lovell. The heat of the re-entry has passed. The heavy gravity forces period has passed. But now they're still dropping uh, at a great rate of speed, and there should go the drogues, according to animation. That is on the scheduled time. We'll wait for confirmation that the drogue shoots are out. The little ones that slow it down so the big shoots will not have quite such a tug when they open a few minutes later. It still lets them drop at 300 miles per hour, hardly a safe speed for landing on the surface of the water. The large chutes, the big drogues must open. The big, uh, that is the big main chutes must open. There are three of them. If uh, one fails, two are adequate to slow the spacecraft to a safe landing. We haven't had confirmation that the drogues are open yet, but according to our animation, built upon the planned timeline of this uh, landing, the main chutes would be open at this point. This is an animation, no confirmation of chute opening yet. Apollo Control, Houston here at 146 hours, 55 minutes. According to our numbers, we should have main chute deploy we should have had it within the last minute. We've heard nothing but uh, a lot of noise on the circuit for the last minute or so. It is understandable that these low-level relays, when everyone is passing it, 
And here comes something from Apollo 8 over, he said. Still waiting for that confirmation of shooting. No answer to the uh, Apollo 8 transmission. The transmission from Apollo 8, no follow-up. In a simulation yesterday, we had extremely good communication from the recovery area, and we see uh, we're hopeful that that situation will be duplicated today. Hundred forty-six hours, fifty-seven minutes. We're now uh, two minutes past the point where the drogue chutes uh, were scheduled to open, or the main chutes scheduled to. Open.